Good evening. Reverend clergy, the Honorable Ambassador Yuri Scherbach, members of the Consular Corps, chairs and co-chairs of the Chicago Sister Cities Program, honorary committee members, members of the press, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. We have come together this evening to mark the 25th anniversary of the tragedy that took place at Chernobyl's nuclear power station. We mourn the victims of this tragedy in Ukraine, Belarus, parts of Russia, and elsewhere. On this 25th anniversary, we honor those who perished in this catastrophe and those who survived. We remember the hundreds of emergency workers, volunteers, supporters worldwide who responded to the catastrophe and to the hundreds of thousands who were uprooted from their homes and the millions who suffered and continue to suffer from health issues related to Chernobyl. At the same time, we remember in our prayers those who today in Japan face the same uncertain future as our fellow brethren in Ukraine. It is a reminder that nuclear safety requires the global community to work together. We will have an opportunity this evening to reflect on the events that took place at Chernobyl 25 years ago. We must recommit ourselves to ensuring the safe use of nuclear power for generations to come. At this time, I would like to thank everyone on our honorary committee for joining together and lending your support to help us commemorate this very important event. I would like to thank Luba Markavich. Thank you for sharing your Chernobyl photographs. They will also be displayed at the Chicago Pedway Corridor from May 20th to July 14th. Thank you for all of the volunteers from the sister cities, from the CAVE Committee, and from our community. I would also like to recognize and thank the members of the hosting committee who have worked diligently for the past several months on this program. Dr. Alex Stilchuk, the Illinois branch president of the Ukrainian Congress Committee. Dr. George Koruk, the president of the Illinois Ukrainian Medical Association of North America. Dr. Anya Mustavich, the Chicago Business and Professional Group. Marta Ferion, the executive chair of the Sister Cities International Program and past chair of the Kyiv Committee, Lida Truchla and Maria Klimchak with the Chicago Kyiv Committee, and Julian Haidau, who is the uh, filmmaker uh, that we will uh, view the documentary later this evening, and our co-chairs of our committee, Dr. Daniel Hrahorchuk, uh, with the Center of Global Health at the University of Illinois at Chicago College of Medicine, Father Myron Panchuk with the Cave Chicago Sister Cities Committee. Last but not least, Vera Halicki with the Chicago Sister Cities Program, who is so conscientious and thorough in everything she always does. Vera, you are so integral, integral in helping us with put this in place. Uh, you are truly indispensable to us on behalf of our com uh, committee and on behalf of the Ukrainian community. I thank you and want you to know that we really appreciate your efforts. Uh, and finally, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Self-Reliance Ukrainian American Federal Credit Union for this evening's event and the Heritage Foundation who made it possible to create the documentary that you will view later this evening. I will now turn the program over to Reverend Myron Punchuk. I kindly ask that everyone in this room please stand. We will honor those who perished from the greatest man-made nuclear accident in the history of this planet on April the 26th, 1986, beginning at 1.23 a.m. We honor our ancestors. We honor the land that has been scorched I also take this opportunity to honor our Japanese brothers and sisters who have twice experienced the terrible effects of radiation, first at the bombings of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and now during the Fukushima meltdown. Let us spend a moment in silence in the honor of all those who have suffered.
Please be seated. <clears throat> it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce to you Dr. Daniel Hrihurchuk, who is co-chair of this event. In my assessment, a true hero, someone who has dedicated the last 20 plus years to investigate the after effects of the Chernobyl disaster. So I ask Dr. Hrihurchuk to come to the podium, please. Reverend clergy, honorable representatives of the United States, Ukraine, Belarus, Russia, and Japan, distinguished guests. First and foremost, I would like to recognize the members of the honorary host committee, the honorable US Congressman Danny Davis, the Honorable Konstantin Kudryk, Consul General of Ukraine, our keynote speaker, the Honorable Dr. Yuri Shcherbak, Mr. Uchiro Nakano, Consul for Consular Affairs for the Consul General of Japan, attending on behalf of Consul General Hisaida, Dr. Bashara Shukar, Commissioner of the Chicago Department of Public Health, I'd also like to acknowledge Dr. Damon Arnold, Director of the Illinois Department of Public Health, Leroy Ayala, Executive Director of Chicago Sister Cities International, Dr. Ihor Masnik from the National Cancer Institute, Dr. Irena Derdinskaya, Research Associate Professor at University of Illinois School of Public Health, Robert Langloy, Moscow Committee Chair of the Chicago Sister Cities, Alexandra Efimova, Moscow Committee Co-Chair, Patrick Shannon, Osaka Committee Chair, Yoko Noge Dean, Osaka Committee Co-Chair, Alexandra Kosogov, Ukrainian Children's Aid and Relief Effort, and Christina Patrikiu, President of the Children of Chernobyl Relief Fund Chicago Chapter. And I'd also again like to acknowledge uh, the contribution of the business community and our sponsor, Self-Reliance Ukrainian American Federal Credit Union. The Chernobyl catastrophe, which began on April 26, 25 years ago, is recognized as the worst nuclear, nuclear reactor accident in history. Today we have come together to commemorate this event and give witness to those devastated by loss of life, health, and home, to those who heroically battled the radiation fires in the aftermath, and to those who have moved finally many, many years later from being victims to being survivors. We also extend our empathy and solidarity to the people of Japan who have gone through the effects of devastating effects of earthquake, tsunami, and the Fukushima reactor accident. Father Panchuk. There are a number of dignitaries <clears throat> that will present greetings today on behalf <clears throat> of the mayor of the city of Chicago, Dr. Sue Kerr. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, mayor Daly could not uh, be here with you tonight, but he wanted to make sure that I uh, read his greetings on his behalf uh, to all of you. Um, and I read, as mayor and on behalf of the city of Chicago, I extend warmest greetings to everyone gathered here today to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the nuclear disaster in Chernobyl, Ukraine. The accident at the nuclear power in Chernobyl took place on April 26, 1986. It stands out as one of the world's worst environmental disasters. For the past 20 years, Chicago and Kiev have been joined as sister cities. During that time, our two cities have enjoyed frequent collaborations in cultural activities, educational exchanges, and medical programs, many of which have been coordinated by the Kiev Committee of Chicago Sister Cities International. I commend all of those participating in such an important event and extend my best wishes for a successful and a meaningful program. Sincerely, Richard M. Daly, Mayor of Chicago. Thank you. Thank you. 
We received a um, greeting from Senator Mark Kirk. Dear friends, on the 25th anniversary of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, I offer my sincerest condolences for this tragedy. Today we remember the victims of this horrible accident and those still suffering in the wake of its aftermath. The socioeconomic, health-related, and environmental costs due to the nuclear fallout continue to have a profound effect on the countries in the region, especially Ukraine and Belarus. I would like to commend the Kiev Committee of the Sister Cities International for organizing tonight's event commemorating the 25th anniversary of Chernobyl nuclear explosion. With such awareness, efforts, and in light of recent events at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, let us never forget the lessons gained from these tragic accidents. Together, we will ensure a safer future for generations to come. Again, my heartfelt condolences to the lives lost and communities affected by the nuclear disaster. Mark Kirk, U.S. Senator. I also have a greeting from the Ambassador of Ukraine to the United States, Alexander, the Honorable Alexander Motsik writes the following. Dear Ukrainian community, dear distinguished guests, in the name of the Embassy of Ukraine to the United States of America, I am sincerely thankful for the invitation to participate in the 25th anniversary commemoration of the Chernobyl disaster at the Chicago Cultural Center. Special words of thanks to the organizers of this event, Chair of the Kiev Committee, Vida Elyashevska, and Dr. Danilo Hryhorchuk, for the significant contribution to preserving and honoring the memory of this horrible chapter in the history of Ukraine, Alexander Motsik, Ambassador of Ukraine to the United States of America. And now it is my privilege to ask that our Council General, Konstantin Kudryk, greet this assembly. Good evening. Honorable Ambassador Dr. Yuri Shcherbak, honorary members of Sister City Committee, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Today we commemorate extremely tragic event in the Ukrainian history that completely changed our country as well as the entire world. In these days we commemorate the 25th anniversary of this catastrophic event after which people started to see a peaceful atom in a different way. This catastrophe took too many lives, and sadly to say that, but will take many more in coming years. Unfortunately, no one can estimate the numbers of people that die of the cancer and other radiation-related illnesses every year, but I can assure you that these numbers are extremely high. Nevertheless, Ukraine is not alone in fighting this battle. This year, we received a great amount of funds from international organizations and different countries that can move us one step closer to succeed in our goals. In recent months, a nuclear danger again became a part of our everyday life. Virtually on 25th Chernobyl disaster, we have got another nuclear disaster in Japan. We share grief and pain with, with all these brave Japanese people who have to fight with radiation. At the end of my speech, I would like to remind all of us that in time, of such horrific tragedies, we must be tough and help each other in order to surpass these difficulties and to continue an evolution path of human being in this world. Thank you to all of you and have a nice evening. I'd now like to uh, introduce my friend and colleague, Dr. Damon Arnold, uh, to say a few words. As a 16th director of the Illinois Department of Public Health, Dr. Arnold oversees an agency comprised of more than 1,100 employees who are responsible for protecting the state's 12.4 million residents, as well as countless visitors through the prevention and control of disease and injury. Prior to his appointment, Dr. Arnold was the medical director for bioterrorism and preparedness for the Chicago Department of Public Health. He has served in the Army National Guard for 23 years, holds the rank of colonel, and currently is the Guard's commander of the Joint Task Force Medical Command in Springfield and the Illinois State Surgeon. Dr. Arnold received his MD and MPH degrees from the University of Illinois 
and has completed law courses at DePaul University College of Law. Over the years, he has had a distinguished military career and received many military awards, including Army Commendation, National Defense Service, and Humanitarian Service Medals. He has served missions to Iraq, Kuwait, Central America, South America, Africa, and Europe, as well as participated in relief efforts for Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. He was the American Red Cross Military Hero for 2007. Dr. Arnold. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I want to um, you know, really thank uh, all the organizations that have put this uh, timely subject together. Um, it's been timely since the time of the actual incident itself. And I want to um, also um, thank uh, Dr. Rohorczyk, who has happened to be um, a, a doctor extraordinaire. Um, he is actually uh, what I consider to be a genius in life. <laughs> I've uh, met him on several occasions in the past and have uh, always conveyed that message about him. Uh, he is now the director of the Global Environmental Health Center for uh, Global Health and uh, has been doing a phenomenal job throughout his career. Uh, I just um, am in envy of the st steps that he takes in life. Um, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> you know, I also wanted to um, thank uh, the, the organizations, the host organizations, um, the Kiev Committee of Chicago Sister Cities International, Ukraine Medical Association of North America, the Center for Global Health at the U of IC College of Medicine, Ukrainian uh, Congress Committee uh, of America, and the Chicago Business and Professional Group. Uh, it's very important uh, that I always mention people when I'm uh, talking at events like this uh, because it takes a lot of dedication, commitment, and uh, their passion in order for things to occur. Um, I, I think D uh, Dr. Yuri uh, Sherbach actually was phenomenal. I you know, was listening to his uh, presentation, and it's rare when you see someone's passion intertwined with what they do uh, in such a high degree. So thank you for all the work you have done and the documents you've produced to bring attention to the issue. Uh, in the field of public health, uh, I always say that Public health is one of those fields that extends from particle physics to the food chain. And if there is an energy-matter relationship in existence, whether it's on the basis of particle physics, chemicals, biochemicals, uh, with the uh, animals and the uh, fauna that surrounds us, the plants, uh, whether we're eating things in the food chain, bacteria, viruses, they're all part of this energy-matter spectrum that follows us around throughout our lives. This spectrum, when this occurred back in 1986, on 26th of April, in the Ukraine, there were two uh, explosions. One was caused by pipes that broke and the leaking of uh, water that became instantaneously steam, causing a core reactor to destabilize. And then there was a second explosion when this happened. However, it was 10 days over which time period that uh, the doctor was actually pointing out uh, that this exposure occurred. So unlike Nagasaki and Hiroshima, these were instantaneous events. This was a prolonged exposure over a time period, a time course, where people were running in to try to contain these uh, events. However, when those explosions happened overseas, they not only affected the people in the immediate proximity, but it spread over a vast region within Europe, within Russia, uh, within the um, areas that are surrounding the reactor, Belarus, the Ukraine. It also went globally because it affected the hearts of people who knew people who were there, their family members, another human spirit that was over, that was involved in this kind of situation. We should always remember that although we are surrounded by these things, the energy matter relationships that are scientifically based, that we are also dealing with the element of the human spirit that's encased within all of these things we see. These are the things that are touched, uh, that we are 
hold this high regard that are irreplaceable, that should be guarded with a high degree of accuracy in how we apply our hands to the things we touch and mold in the world. We should make sure the safety is there. We should put as much time investment as possible to make sure the things we're bringing into creation are actually not harmful to us as people because the precious cargo that these bodies contain, we can ill afford to lose. The highest level of becoming a human being on Earth is actually when you take that little element inside of us, that human spirit, our intellect, and you combine it with your passion. But the passion is not what's so important by itself. It's when you combine it with compassion. What I'm talking about is reaching the highest level on earth of being able to combine passion with compassion, the kind of thing that happened when those responders went in to help people who were in harm's way. Those responders overcame their personal fears, their personal obstacles, their self-interest, and went into an environment that was actually reaching in to save other people's lives. I know Dr. Horchek knows this very heavily with the field that he is in, uh, with reaching into a patient's lives and exposing yourself sometimes to dangers that uh, others may not deem to be acceptable. Those responders actually were in line with what uh, the good doctor was saying about how we have to respond to emergency response efforts. We have got to be ready and prepared to respond to all assortment of things such as hurricanes and snowstorms and those kinds of things. But when we get down to a nuclear event, you're talking about the distribution of particles like I-131 and cesium-127 that are going to be persistent in the ecology for a prolonged period of time. Something that needs to be dealt with over a long period of time. Now, you can start looking at people as populations of people who are exposed in subpopulations, and you can start looking at the effects on thyroid cancer incidents. You can start looking at the effects of cancer. But you've already started to destroy some of the human spirit, as he was indicating. In Russia itself, there were 500,000 responders. They spent over 18 billion rubles in the immediate response, it almost economically brought Russia to its knees. It changed the lives of people forever in that region about their feelings about trust in government, trust in science. These things were compromised just as, as well as their physical presence being there. One of the things that we can say is that this was really the worst industrial um, accident involving nuclear materials in history. We now have Japan to add to the list of those that reached a level of seven. And we can ill afford to ever have something like this happen again. It is time to really look and make sure that we are safeguarding the future for our nations. And that is across borders, this international tie to everyone else. Again, the global theme of the agency, <laughs> the global world, we are not insulated from one thing or another, one country or another by a border. Natural disasters, infectious diseases, incidents like Chernobyl, they don't respect borders, international laws. They find people wherever they are. They spread across the world. It is irresponsible for us as human beings on Earth not to understand the pain and suffering of other people in the world. That's why I really want to commend all these organizations for banding together to talk about this. Some of the, the, the reactor design flaws and the human error components, people have been making strides to eliminate those since Chernobyl. However, we still see some reactors which are outdated. We still see attempts that have led to something like Japan. 
this threat has not gone away. As time goes on, we're doing studies going forward, following the people who were exposed to this radiation exposure, just as we did in 1945 with Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We can ill afford to abandon the plight of people who have been exposed. We must continue to put resources behind it. We must continue to support research, the sciences that are behind it, the explanation of what happened to understand, to make people understand all the way from the legislative level down to knocking on someone's door what this means for us. So I applaud your efforts also for going forward to make sure that we're addressing that issue. There were numbers, and we're making estimates of the numbers of people who were actually affected and how many people died from this incident. But the ripple effect of one person dying affects the entire family, the community, the workplace, the world. The things that they could have produced with their lives are astounding. The solutions to our problems are astounding. The loss of the human spirit of one person is too much. We can't let this happen to one person. So as we count the numbers, remember how many lives they actually affected. We can go geometrically and look at what one person has affected, never mind a collection of people, an entire community. So I really, I know we have limited time, and I know that they have other things to do with this presentation, but I felt it was criti critically important to support this. I know Dr. Uh, Rohorczyk, has been involved in environmental science and medicine and multiple other things I can't even understand uh, throughout his life. And the Illinois Department of Public Health needs to support the efforts and the uh, mechanisms to explore issues like this and to fund them to make sure that the scientists behind this issue is explored more deeply, that people contribute to this, both public and private partnerships, to make sure we are safeguarding ourselves and our future. We cannot leave this global world. The last slide he showed, I thought was just absolutely incredible. It was the slide of nature. Sometimes we forget we're connected to it. We cannot leave it in a worse shape than we found it in when we were born. We have to make sure we don't contaminate this precious environment that is so intricately connected to our genetic makeup and our human spirit. So make sure that you, I pray for those families that were affected and are still affected. I pray that we have the conscience and the moral perpetuity and the commitment to make sure we continue to follow them and make sure that their lives don't receive a second tragedy of inattention. I want to commend everyone again for putting your time into this, showing up tonight, and it's astounding how many people are here, how many people are so concerned about this. And I see clergy members as well. They're the ones who hold the hands in the disasters. And I'm sure there are people here who are just in every way intricately involved in this situation. I commend all of you for standing up for what's right and to listening to something like this, this brilliant presentation that he has given. So I encourage you to keep, and keep on the path of making sure that we unite as a, as a world in order to address issues like this. We can ill afford to have inattention to something so instrumentally important. I commend you for your passion and your compassion as high-level human beings. Thank you. It is my honor this evening to present awards to two people that have spent the past 20-plus years researching the health effects of the Chernobyl disaster. Dr. Irena Daradenskaya 
is the Associate Director of the University of Fogarty Programs in Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine, and is a Research Associate Professor at the School of Public Health at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Her work on Chernobyl disaster began in 1987. From 1988 through 1994, Dr. Daradenskaya was an associate professor at the Belarusian Research Institute of Radiation Medicine. During that time, she served as the health team leader in the Belarusian-led project that first presented on-site assessments of Chernobyl's effects on in utero exposed children in the late 1980s. As a physician, she performed multiple trips to highly contaminated regions of Gomel, Mogiliv, and Brest, Oblast of Belarus, participating in health-related activities and resettlement of families. For the past 23 years, she and her collaborators in Belarus and Russia are studying health effects of Chernobyl on women and children. Dr. Daradenskaya is the U.S. Principal Investigator of the Studies on Breast Cancer in Women of Belarus after the Chernobyl accident and Health Effects of Radiation Exposure in Children Exposed to Chernobyl Accident While in Utero. Dr. Daradenskaya is a recipient of an award from the Council of Ministers for Excellence in Reducing Children's Mortality and Awards from the Ministry of Health of Belarus for Scientific Achievements. Dr. Deredenskaya, please. Dear members of Chicago Sister Cities International Committee, friends, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I am very honored to receive this award on behalf of all Belarusian physicians who worked as emergency workers during the Chernobyl disaster. I am very grateful for Kiev Committee of Sister Cities International for the recognition of our work and our accomplishments as physicians and scientists during this difficult time. And I'm also very grateful to National Institute of Health, Fogarty International Center, and personally, Professor Daniel Grherchuk uh, for continuous support of my work and work of my colleagues in Belarus, Russia, and Ukraine on health consequences of Chernobyl disaster. And I would like to express my deepest condolences and sympathies, sympathy to all families who lost their loved ones during and after this horrible accident and accident at Fukushima. And thank you again for this honor. Thank you. Our second award is for Dr. Daniel Rohorchuk. He is the director of the Global Environmental Health Programs at the Center of Global Health at the University of Illinois College of Medicine and Professor Emer Emer Emeritus at the University of Illinois School of Public Health. His work on Chernobyl began in 1992 as part of the World Bank Environmental Mission in Ukraine. He has served as an advisor to the Ukrainian Ministry of Health and the U.S. National Cancer Institute on Health Consequences of the Chernobyl Accident. For the past 15 years, Dr. Hrurchuk has been the principal investigator on a U.S. National Institute of Health Fogarty grant that supported research training on environmental health issues, including Chernobyl in Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia. For the past decade, he and his research team in Ukraine have provided data management support to the U.S. National Cancer in Institute Research Program on thyroid cancer in children following the Chernobyl reactor accident. Dr. Hrhorchuk has been recognized for his work on Chernobyl by the White House and by the government of Ukraine. It is my honor to my dear friend, Dr. Hrhorchuk. I'd like to sincerely thank the Chicago Sisters City Program for this award and, and recognition. I especially want to thank the U.S. National Institutes of Health, uh, the U.S. National Cancer Institute, in particular Dr. Ihor Masnik, and the Fogarty International Center uh, for supporting our uh, collaborative research training and capacity building in Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia for these uh, past many years. I'd also like to thank my family for supporting me in this uh, effort, and also my uh, colleagues 
at the University of Illinois, in particular Dr. Dardinskaya, with whom I worked for, uh, for, for many years, uh, also my colleagues at the School of Public Health, the new colleagues in the College of Medicine, and also our data management center in Ukraine, and the, the many uh, excellent uh, scientists that we've worked with in Ukraine, uh, Russia, and Belarus on Chernobyl issues. Thank you very much. It now gives me great pleasure to present a very prestigious award uh, to Dr. Ihor Masnik from the U.S. National Cancer uh, Institute. This award is from the Ukrainian Academy of Medical Sciences. Uh, Dr. Masnik earned his Ph.D. in organic chemistry from the University of Chicago, a task he accomplished while in the U.S. Army active duty service and later the retired service where he earned the rank of colonel. In 1962, Dr. Musnick joined the U.S. National Cancer Institute as a chemist in the endocrine evaluation branch. His career at the National Cancer Institute included positions as chief of the planning and analysis branch and director of the extramural research program, division of cancer biology and diagnosis, acting associate director for the Office of International Affairs, and deputy director of the division of cancer biology, diagnosis, and centers. In 1995, Dr. Masnick began working with the Radiation Effects Branch in the Division of Cancer Biology to design and implement the National Cancer Institute's Chernobyl Research Program. His chemistry background, language skills, dedication, and creative thinking as project director were instrumental in the success of this complex program, which included study populations in Ukraine and Belarus. He was adept in managing the diplomatic, financial, purchasing, and contractual aspects of the program, and in serving as translator and guide to the cultures and traditions of Ukraine and Belarus. While Dr. Masnik retired this past December after a 46-year career at the National Cancer Institute, he continues to consult with the Radiation Effects Branch on the Chernobyl projects. I'd like to uh, read uh, in Ukrainian for just a moment uh, this award. Національна Академія Медичних Наук України, Президія Національної Академії Медичних Наук України нагороджує почесну грамоту масника Ігоря Григоровича за багаторічну науково дослідницьку міжнародну організаційну роботу, вагомий внесок у розвиток охорони здоров'я, населення, постраждалого внаслідок аварії на Чорнобильській атомній станції. Підписав президент Національної академії, академік Андрій Сердюк. І, and uh, a quick translation, the Presidium of the National Academy of Medical Sciences of Ukraine awards, presents this award to Dr. Ihor Masnik for his many years of scientific international organizational work and his significant contributions to the uh, protection of the health of the population that suffered from the effects of the Chernobyl accident, uh, signed by uh, the President Academy of the Academy, Dr. Andriy Serdyuk. And I spoke with, with him uh, today by telephone, and he asked me to give you uh, personally uh, his congratulations. Dr. Masnik. First of all, I, I thank you all for coming. I thank the committees for giving me this honor today, unexpected, maybe unearned, but an honor that I appreciate more than anything else so far. Chernobyl is a step flower. Chernobyl, that's the location of Ukrainian nuclear power plant. Chernobyl is the site of the largest nuclear accident in the world. <clears throat> Today I feel honored receiving the recognition for work on Chernobyl program. This is obviously not the achievement of only my own work, but the result of extensive collaborative effort and an analyzing the results of Ukrainian, American, and Belarusian contributors. Today, I represent countries 
solutions from National Cancer Institute, Research Institute for Radiation Medicine, Columbia University, and Ukrainian Academy of Sciences, the Thyroid Cancer Program. Specifically, Drs. Bibi, Dr. Thomas, Elaine Run, Dr. Wachholz, and Bouville, all my collaborators. How, Jeff, Dr. Finch from Colombia, and then two leaders, Dr. Romanenko and Bebeshko from the Leukemia Project, and Dr. Tronko from Ukrainian staff and other work. Some of them are deceased already among the giants Gil Bibi and Jaff Howe. They laid the foundation for this effort and monitored it for years. We learned a lot from them. Two projects were studied. Thyroid cancer among youth, 0 to 18 years, 8, 13,000 of them, and leukemia incidents among the liquidators working on the reactor roof of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. 71 cases of leukemia and 501 of controls were included in the leukemia project. Without their participation, this work would never have been possible. I acknowledge their contribution. I salute their effort. I would be remiss not to acknowledge the lasting support of NCI during these two decades and the co cooperative spirit of all participants throughout the two decades of our collaboration. I thank you all for being here today. Thank you.